live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening. Tasmanians will decide who forms the next government tomorrow, five and a half weeks after Jeremy Rockcliffe called an election. The major parties have made their last minute pitch to voters, but it's the crossbench they'll likely have to plead their case to, a minority government appearing inevitable. A day out from the early poll he called in search of certainty and stability. The Premier has a final plea. We have come a long way. Uh, there is more to do, uh, but there is a lot to risk. We cannot afford a Labor-led minority government coalition of chaos. He wants to get back to work as soon as possible, releasing his plan for the first 100 days. Focusing on those key areas of cost of living, uh, health uh, and housing. But a press conference intruder showed he might be kicking into the wind. Please do something different, something that takes into account the people that you're serving. After 10 years of a Liberal government, don't give them 14, because if they haven't fixed it by now, they never will. Flanked by Labor volunteers, Rebecca White's confident Labor's ready to return to power. A plan to take urgent action on the cost of living and set our state up for a better future. Despite the pitches from both parties for majority government, recent polling suggests it's incredibly unlikely. An aggregate predicting 15 Liberal seats short of the magic 18, 10 Labor, 4 Greens, 3 for the Jackie Lambie network and 3 independents. The polling is pointing towards a massive vote for non-major party candidates, something in the area of 40%. It seems quite extraordinary. While the pollsters' numbers point to the Liberals having more seats, their path to government could be a little more challenging. It's interesting because during the campaign they've in some way annoyed virtually everybody who they'll have to work with if they do fall off a few seats short. So I wouldn't absolutely take it for granted. Hoping for a seat or four at the table, the Greens say they'll work with anyone. Change is possible. That's been our message throughout the campaign. That's what we'll be fighting hard to achieve in a balance of power in this term of parliament. Though they'll contend with the Jackie Lambie network to be crowned kingmakers. But the Liberals were forced to hose down concerns of another conflict of interest scandal relating to Braddon candidate Vanette Mead. It's alleged her construction company submitted a tender for a project she was involved in as a councillor. You can't have uh, a party of government going to an election with candidates who have this level of accusation against them that have not been properly tested. Uh, Ms Mead has issued a statement. I have every confidence in Ms Mead. Vanette Mead said in a statement that integrity is paramount and she's always acted on the advice of the general manager. Reporter Josh Duggan who's in the tally room at Hobart's Hotel Grand Chancellor. Josh, when are we likely to know who's forming government? Kim, it could be a couple of weeks before we find out who the next government of Tasmania is. The polls are expect uh, the polls are pointing to a minority government, and some seats are expected to be incredibly tight. We are likely to get a broad picture of how things stand by the end of tomorrow night, but some seats won't be settled until all the postal votes can come in and preferences can be distributed a fortnight later. There's also going to be some candidates and even sitting members who face an excruciating wait to see what their future holds. From there, the major parties will likely be looking to the crossbench for support. 18 is the number of seats needed to form government. As of yesterday, 88,000 Tasmanians had voted either, either by pre-polling, postal vote or via telephone. It's those votes and the ones cast tomorrow that will decide Tasmania's future. Kim? That it will. Thank you very much there, Josh Duggan. Well, it's a system we've used to elect members of state parliament for for more than a century, but many are still stumped by the Hare Clark system. But as Annie Green reports, it's a voting process designed to represent the interests of as many Tasmanians as possible. We've been using it since 1907, but for many, Hare Clark remains a mystery. Designed by Thomas Hare and modified by Andrew Inglis Clark, it works by what's called the single transferable vote. You number your preferred candidate from one to seven, and if your top candidate has already been elected or excluded, your vote transfers down to your next preference. To be elected, a candidate needs a quota 
or 12.5% of the total valid votes in their electorate. To see how it works, let's take a look at how it played out in Bass at the last state election. Then Premier Peter Gutwin pocketed almost half the primary vote, a honking 32,500 ballots. He doesn't need all of those to make his quota, but the leftovers don't go to waste. They're all transferred to each voter's next preference. We can see they mostly go to Gutwin's Liberal co-candidates. Sarah Courtney makes her quota next, and Michael Ferguson comes close. And now the cut. The candidate with the fewest votes is excluded, and their ballots redistributed to the next preference. And this goes on for round after round of counting until enough candidates have a quota. This election will be a little different because the lower house is expanding to 35 members, meaning each electorate will have two extra seats at the table. The quota a candidate requires is now lower than it was in 2021. But with more people running per seat, there'll be more competition. And you can join us tomorrow night live from the tally room as the results roll in. Our coverage begins in our 6pm bulletin, followed by the latest results and analysis during our AFL coverage and post-game. To other news, and a three-year-old boy has been killed in a horrifying crash near Lefroy in the state's northeast. He was in the back seat of a car which slammed into a tree in the early hours of this morning. Police are now trying to work out the circumstances leading to the tragedy. The signs of a single vehicle fatality on Bridport Road near Lefroy clearly visible today. A mother and two children were travelling in a black Holden Verena when it struck a small embankment and careered into a tree just before 1.30 this morning. Where well, sadly a three-year-old child has passed away. A resident living close by was woken by the real-life nightmare unfolding. My dog was barking because we could hear shouting and um, so I come out and I could hear a guy saying help my son help my son and then a lady was saying um, I can't I can't. Police say a male passerby took the two children to Georgetown Hospital. Where sadly one child has been pronounced dead. The remaining child and the female driver were then taken to the Launceston General Hospital the 24-year-old female driver was today under sedation, reportedly with a broken leg, while a four-and-a-half-year-old girl, believed to be her daughter, was uninjured. Police still haven't determined how the crash occurred or if the male passerby was known to the woman. Bridport Road between Dalrymple Road and Troopers Track remained closed for several hours while crash investigators searched for clues. It's not known if the children were properly restrained in the vehicle. That'll be part of the investigation. The vehicle involved will be thoroughly uh, checked over and, uh, and uh, examined in relation to those sort of things. Witnesses are urged to contact police. Melinda Ogden, 7 Tasmania News. The operator of the jumping castle at the centre of the Hillcrest tragedy could face trial in September. Rosemary Gamble appeared via telephone in the Devonport Magistrates Court this morning. She's previously pleaded not guilty to one count of a failure to comply with health and safety duty. A tentative hearing date has been set aside for September 2. Tasmanian paramedics will begin industrial action on Monday morning over the state's ambulance ramping crisis. They'll be refusing to provide additional care to patients once they're inside hospitals, a duty they currently perform. Our members are frustrated at the failure of the government and the department to be able to implement a time-limited policy on ambulance ramping. The psychological stress that this is causing the paramedics is unbelievable. I've had a call to a 12-year-old um, cardiac arrest and it took me 12 minutes to be able to leave the hospital to, to respond to that job. Nurses have also taken industrial action over the proposed ramping ban. And on the eve of the state election, a Hollywood heavyweight is yet again weighing in on Tasmanian environmental issues. Leonardo DiCaprio has issued a third social media post to his 62 million followers, calling for an end to native forest logging. On Wednesday, Liberal Resources spokesperson Felix Ellis said Mr DiCaprio should stick to acting. 
Level 1 water restrictions will come into effect for parts of the state's east coast on Monday as Tasmania continues to feel the effects of a long dry summer. Residents in Orford and Triabunna will have to make some small adjustments with curfews placed on the use of automatic watering systems and sprinklers. Launceston, Lady Barron and Bridport remain on alert. Households there are being urged to be mindful about water use to avoid similar restrictions in the future. Mental health experts and advocates have come together in Hobart for the 10th Suicide Prevention Community Forum. Policymakers, researchers and community members among those gathering for the conference. Organisers say the event is important as it allows a sharing of strategies that can help local communities tackle the issue. There's lots of activity that happens that supports people in lots of different ways uh, and the forums are really um, important opportunity to be able to share that information. There's always place-based approaches are needed so no matter what community we're working with, whether it's urban or in rural areas, we need to look at the needs of the community. If you or someone you know needs help, call Lifeline on 13 11 14. The Ant Army is descending on My State Bank Arena as we speak, ahead of Game 2 of the NBL Finals Series. John Hunt joins us from the venue. John, how's the atmosphere? Victoria, the anticipation is building, with the Jackies looking to get the NBL Grand Final Series back on track at home. My State Bank Arena is a sea of green, with the tonight selling out. Young and old are enjoying the pre-game festivities, but their focus will soon turn to the big game. Tasmania are 1-0 down in the series after a lacklustre 23-point loss to Melbourne United on Sunday. While it's not do or die, a loss tonight would mean they'd have to win three matches on the trot to claim the championship two of which would have to be played in Melbourne. So, Victoria, the stage is set for a big night of basketball. Tip-off is at 7.30. Oh, what a night it's shaping up to be. Thanks very much, John Hunt there. Well, off the back of a massive week in Tasmania's AFL history, a new chapter has begun for our community leagues. The NTFA naming the six clubs set to make up the inaugural Premier League next year, but the launch hasn't been without controversy. The first look at the clubs behind a major shake-up to Northern football. Deloraine, Longford, South Launceston and Scottsdale receiving the call-up, picked to join Launceston and North Launceston in the newly formed NTFA Premier League. To move back into the, the top tier, yeah, it's going to be great for our, our junior kids coming through. It'll be very exciting for our football club. I think we've worked very di diligently behind the scenes across the past four or five years. The four NTFA Division 1 sides earning the promotion after passing the lengthy selection process. What we've got here today is the best fit at this point in time. It's clear at times that not every club met uh, that selection criteria. Noticeably left off the field, reigning Division 1 Premiers Rocha Lee as well as heavyweights Hillwood and Bridge North, both previously showing interest. There are always going to be uh, parties who change doesn't suit. Once that emotion subsided, it, it's time to have another conversation. Despite the questions firing from the sidelines, the NTFA is forging into the new era ahead of the Tasmanian State League's farewell season, focus already shifting to the future. Establishing our pathway for the Tasmanian Football Club and our three strong Premier League competitions are going to be fundamental in providing that opportunity for more Tasmanians to play football at the elite levels. Tasmania still has work to do after day two of its Sheffield Shield final against Western Australia. WA added precious runs in the morning session before three crucial wickets had the Tigers on the back foot a tee. A short time ago, Tasmania were 3 for 112. Resuming on 8 for 322, WA were after runs while Tasmania wanted quick wickets. Riley Meredith striking early, removing Cameron Gannon for 10. Cooper Connolly closing in on a century, also scoring some luck along the way. Goes hard in the air, out towards deep backward point, should be taken and he's dropped it. It's gone down. Connolly falling 10 runs short of a shield final turn. WA all out for 347. The Tigers chase getting off to a horror start. 
Oh, big shout, big shout, big trouble for Matthew Wade. Wade out for one, but according to the replay, he might have been unlucky. Runs hard to come by, Tasmania making it to lunch without losing any more wickets. The battle continuing into the afternoon, Tasmania's batting far from fluent. The Wackers' notorious bounce keeping Jewel and Charlie Wakeham on their toes. In spite of the trouble, a partnership began to build. On the pads this time and whipped nicely out towards the boundary. So Jewel finally getting one away off the pads. Over the top. Good shot in control of that one. Wakeham lived dangerously, surviving two appeals for a catch. He wasn't as lucky the third time. In the air, down towards deep mid on and the catch is held by Hilton Cartwright. The fans well prepared for a long and tough battle. Jewel looks set to make a half century, but right on tee, he came unstuck. A little edge, second go at it for Inglis and he's given. Jewel is gone. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. And hometown boxing star Tyler Blizzard is putting in the final training sessions ahead of the ANBF Australasian featherweight title in Launceston next month. The fight will headline a list of Tasmanian and interstate professionals who will glove up for the Pro-Am with organisers hoping the local talent sends a strong message. I'm excited to be headlining it and um, also give these other fighters uh, the platform to, to achieve whatever whatever they want. We've got the best boxers Tazzy have got to offer and yeah we're going to put all their skills on display and you know show the rest of the country what we've got. The main event follows a series of amateur fighters who'll jump into the ring on April 13. Good evening Hobart with our highest today 22 degrees that's two above the March average. Launceston recorded 21, Devonport 20 and one less in Burnie. Overnight Lyawini dropped to zero while today St Helens, Friendly Beaches, Grove and Bushy Park all made 21. Flinders Island 20, King Island and Lowhead 19, Strawn 18 today. Some scattered low cloud was over the west and the Ferno Islands as the high clouds started to stream over from the northwest today. A thick cloud band covers a large portion of the mainland as well. Thunderstorms sit in the cover over inland Queensland and northwest New South Wales. Tomorrow, the large high develops south of WA, sending a ridge over us and Victoria. A trough along the northern coast of Western Australia and inland Queensland. The winds west southwesterly at 10 to 20 knots. They'll tend more northwesterly in the afternoon and blow up to around 35 knots over southern waters. So there's a gale warning been issued there for waters from Tasman Island to Low Rocky Point. And we have a strong wind warning that's on from Low Rocky Point to Sandy Cape. The weekend for Hobart's like this, for Saturday anyway, partly cloudy and 21. 16 for Medina, a shower moving in, mostly sunny for Oatlands, a top of 20. Launceston, a high of 22 and partly cloudy, 21 the top for Devonport, mostly sunny for Lyawini, one overnight, 15 the high tomorrow. Burnie expecting 20, a sunny day, a shower though for Strawn, 17 the top and 18 the high for Marawar, St Helens a top of 20, Swansea sunny and 21, 21 also for Orford. And on Sunday, showers for the central and west with an extension over the south later. A windy day on Monday but mostly fine and partly cloudy. And on Tuesday, showers over the west and south and possibly King Island. 29 in Perth and sunny. Adelaide sunny as well, partly cloudy in Melbourne and Canberra. Sydney a top of 25 and a possible shower for Brisbane. Bit of cloud about, but still fine. 18 in Hobart, 18 in Launceston, 19 in Devonport. Now, I know you've forgotten before, Kim, so please remember to vote tomorrow. Oh, and by the way, which way are you leaning? <laughs> Leaving that alone, Merv. That is all your news for now. Don't forget, you can watch our full election coverage tomorrow. It starts with our 6pm bulletin and then host Michael Maney will be coming to you from the tally room throughout the breaks in our AFL coverage. And if you haven't already, as Merv said, don't forget to vote and enjoy your democracy sausage. For now, from the team, it is good night.